Howdy folks, we got a bit of change of scenery here in the shop today. We got my wife's CRV in here and it needs an oil change. Uh, it chronically wants to throw a P2646 I think is the code. Basically it's an oil pressure issue at the rocker because this engine's got VTEC. So it causes it kind of to surge I guess uh, under heavy acceleration. I've never had to do it to me when I've been driving it, but my wife has a couple times. Yeah, and the quick fix seems to always be just doing an oil change and it goes away for however many months and then it kind of comes back when uh, it's in need of an oil change again. So I don't keep super close tabs on kind of when this thing needs oil change. This is only the second time or third time or something that I've had to do an oil change on it. My wife used to just take it to the dealership for that, but uh, it's obviously out of warranty it's a 2008 so there's no advantage of going to the dealership anymore for it uh, I keep oil on stock and I just stop by Napa and grab a filter but I gotta climb underneath this thing I pulled it into the shop last night got the K10 out of here so the snow and junk could thaw off this thing but I gotta climb underneath and I don't even remember where the oil filter is on this but I'll get the, the oil pan and uh, a couple wrenches and get the oil drained out of this and Get her back on the road. Seventeen. I'm sure y'all can't see anything. My camera stand doesn't go low enough. But it's a 17 mil socket on the drain plug. And the oil filter is just right behind where the drain plug is. So I should actually make sure that my big band is down here. Yeah, gotta love the just barely. That scared the crap out of me. Bumped the emergency panic button on my keychain. Oh, that's gonna be an awkward spot. I'm a pretty big fan of this design where the drain plug and filter are right next to each other because you just need one pan and you can get it underneath both of them. I've worked on a lot of vehicles and farm equipment where that wasn't the case. You, uh, you uh, had to have at least two pans if you didn't want to make a mess. If you don't have <clears throat> degreaser wipes in your shop, go buy a tub of them. I don't have running water out here. And these things are a must for doing any sort of work. I'm a believer of putting at least a little bit of oil in your filter before you stick it in. Uh, basically so it can start soaking stuff up and then you've got clean oil to uh, use to put a little bit on the gasket. <clears throat> Greatest internet debate there ever was. Nobody can agree about what's the right thing to do. Do it the way that you're taught until something breaks.
I've seen this a few times. Um, basically in the, the winter time, it seems like it gets so cold, uh, we get some condensation in the oil uh, from the heating and thawing. And it's, I didn't notice any you know, issue in the oil as it was coming out. Obviously you can look at the pan and see that it wasn't milky, but usually right at the top of the engine it seems you'll get some of this icky stuff and I just wipe off what's on the cap and put fresh oil in. Can't do much else about it. For those of you wondering, right at my thumb there, <clears throat> engine oil capacity, including the filters, 4.4. So I'll stick in four and let it run for a little bit and then top it off with that last half quarter or so once I kind of know exactly where it's landing. I've been using one of these little fixed dealios for uh, reading codes. I just have a, an app on my, my phone and honestly, don't recommend it. Just go get a regular code reader. Um, you know, the only advantage of having this style is that I can pull up active gauges on the dash, but for a lot of vehicles, this is not compatible with some of their sensors and it can't interpret any of that data. So if you're looking at, uh, you know, say a, a fuel ratio, you're looking at like an O2 sensor, uh, it can only tell you the voltage, which is great if you go look up the voltage, but that's just an extra step. Um, I think my next next purchase is gonna just be an actual bi-directional scanner, because this does not have any bi-directional things. The other thing I hate about it is I paid like 30 bucks for this, and the app, He's constantly pestering you to get some like premium service to unlock uh, more tools. It's like, well, I paid money for it. I want, I thought I was getting those tools. Uh, I thought that's what I was paying for because this is not, this does not cost $30. I guarantee you that. I think I paid $30 for my last regular scan tool from uh, the auto store. But that's kind of my two cents. It is handy for resetting codes though, which I gotta do right now because it's still gotta check in and light on it. I know I don't have a seatbelt on. I don't know if you guys can see the check oil light, or not check oil, check engine light up here in the left hand corner. Usually when you turn the key on, it should come on for a second and then turn off. And if it's got a code stored, it'll stay on with the, the key in the on position. So, yep, yeah, came up with the same 2646. Yeah, this is a non-stop ad nonsense. Da, da, da. And this calls a minor driving impact, I would say. It's probably a little more than a minor one, but... Gonna reset. Light clears on the dash. Okay. Ah, stop. Okay. I'll put in a little bit more oil and I check it, and uh, hopefully this doesn't throw a code again. Well, if you're not uh, 
a regular doing your old oil changes now is a good time to inspect other stuff in the the engine compartment so you check power steering fluid on this car for example it was low so when I pulled it in last night popped the hood I saw it immediately and so I didn't forget I immediately went and grabbed power steering fluid and topped it off uh, it wasn't dangerously low or anything but just needed some um, this car the coolant reservoir is kind of tucked in down here a little puke tank uh, this is a sealed system so the puke tank is not like as it's an important part but it's not like the old uh, old ones where it relied on the expansion and contraction a lot for that um, that was a little low topped it off uh, I keep all these sorts of fluids on hand uh, brake fluid I look at it at a glance and go yep it's good uh, I know it probably needs wiper fluids so I've got some on the shelf I'll top it off while it's in here and yeah just do a general inspection check your belts make sure that they're not fraying on the edges um, it's a good idea to run it, you know, put it in park, parking brake on, pop the hood and run it for a minute and just listen because you can sometimes hear if something sounds really bad, uh, now's a really good time to uh, address it and fix it. Uh, air filter, this is a great time to, to check that and make sure it's good. I have not checked that for this yet and I'm talking about it means I should do it. Oh, these clips are super hard to get off sometimes. People with small hands must have designed this vehicle because my fat hands don't like to fit in there. Okay, so at a glance I can look in there and go, yep, that filter's plenty clean. I did it like, I don't know, nine months ago. And uh, my wife doesn't drive on dusty gravel roads super often, so she doesn't need a filter all the time. And make sure you put all those clasps back on. Uh, this is a new battery in fall of 2020, so I know that that's good. It hasn't had any issues starting. Uh, there's no piles of oil underneath of it. <clears throat> you know, having it parked under inside the garage for the night, it's a good opportunity to look at that sort of stuff. And, and yeah, do what you can while you've got it in the shop. It needs a little bit of air in the tires, I noticed, so I'll check those as well. And see if my wife wants to clean the inside of the windows while it's here in the shop but other than that we can uh, pull in the next next vehicle and get that one serviced thanks for watching